Uh, so I'm really excited about this new product just being released by Microsoft. And I know you've got a demonstration account of that, which really does help you look across your whole school at a range of different things, whether it be analytics on attendance, homework submitted, uh, all sorts of things like that in terms of what's happening in uh, teaching and learning. So do you want to just throw your screen up and uh, maybe yeah. give us a quick look through that? Let's look at this Power BI stuff because this stuff's really cool. I've just started working with this. Um, uh, probably what was it two days ago so very new so excuse the uh the brevity here i might make some mistakes or not get things to work but effectively this is a it's a microsoft product that runs on the web that leverages um spreadsheets so google uh sorry google yeah microsoft excel spreadsheets you can also plug it into a whole range of other data sources google analytics is one of them um, i'll just show you all the data sources here so you can yeah, pull it out of workbooks, um, SQL servers. So if you have a local uh, database that runs with SQL, you can actually query that directly. You've got uh, Google Analytics, you've got all sorts of stuff. But for the most part, I think the, the Excel stuff would be the, the simplest way to get going. And what I've done is imported a, a workbook that has some kids' NAPLAN data in there, some attendance data, and some reporting data, right? And what it'll do is actually link all that stuff together for us. So if we look at... Here I've got attendance summary, and they're, they're the fields that are in that, that workbook. I've got NAPLAN data, and then I've got reporting data, right? So they're the three kind of areas that I'm, that I'm looking at. And I haven't, I haven't quite got this perfect yet, but I'll just show you what can be done with this and why I think it's so, so important. So, you know, a lot of tools have graphing engines. A lot of tools can do, um, you know, visualizations of data. But the problem is to do that. If someone says to me, can you go and figure out which teacher has the most students in their class. Um, how do I do that? I've got to sit down for bloody hours and trawl through all this information and make a graph and you know, filter out the spreadsheets. That's just a nightmare. But with this, I just click on all data here and it pulls in that, that big spreadsheet that I had full of all this data. And I just say, uh, in natural language, so you have this natural language processor, it figures out what I'm talking about, which teacher has the most students. Bang. Well, that's, that's awesome, hey? In real time. Yeah, nothing yeah. had to load it, just bang, straight like that. So I can see Teresa Coke has the most students. That's interesting. So let's try something else. Let's try count students per teacher. This is where you can see that natural language algorithm coming over. It's the same thing that I've asked it to do, but I've asked it a totally different way. Uh, and this is the power of it, right? So that an average teacher can actually get in here and do something and not go, holy crap, this is so complicated. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, you know, that, that, that can rest on us as the administrator to get the data in there in a way that's queryable. And then if we want to say count students per teacher, what if we want to drill down? We say teacher in year nine. And I can see the count of students per teacher in year nine. Suddenly it's changed, you know, we've got Dan Farthing's up the top here. So, I mean, this for me, this is like Nirvana, you know, this is the holy grail kind of material. So, uh, yeah. that's some examples, you know, we can do other things like total student ID results together so we're sort of totaling the student ids results um, you can see that sort of draws a graph of the excellence how many people got excellent how many people got very good how many people got eight we can drill down into that even more if we want um, we can do another thing like we can look at you know just bear in mind here this is all happening live i haven't pre-cached any of this out class uh, total out class which is a a field i've set up i should really call that truancy or absence or something like that by student ID, and that will show me all the student IDs by absences. So I can see here, this person hasn't even been here this year. Uh, the next person, you know, down the track, and I can do that at a per year level basis if I'd like to, or a form level basis. Um, so if I do total out class by form, for instance, that's an interesting one. See which forms have the most truancy. Um, you know, 9D is leading the pack there. And, uh, so that's really easy for me to do. I can also look at it by subject. Now, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? So which <laughs> subject has the most truancy maths? Can you believe it? There oh, you no go. way. That would Probably never happen. English teachers out there. Uh, <laughs> and then you might want to say uh, which subject against, let us type against student ID. And I can see which student ID was actually absent out of that subject by graph here. Um, so yeah, I mean you can you can really see the power of that, can't you? I mean it's crazy. Oh, like I can even so then good. drill into one of those specifically. I can say you know instead of by subject, I'm going to say by the total absences by 
09 maths um, year nine, like I've just read off one of those classes and it'll pull that up for me and show me um, the total out classes in the list. So, yeah, it's um, pretty much sky's the limit sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, that is so good. And what I love about that is you can start to track multiple variables and you just start to wonder, well, I wonder if this is an influence on that. And then you just type it in and boom, there's the data right in front of you. Uh, so in terms of being able to start to measure and track, I mean, this is just something new. I I'm quite excited I can, about it. I, I can think change it's that. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I can change that from, from a bar graph. I say, show me as a line graph. Obviously, that doesn't work for that data. But show me as a scatter right. plot. Um, it'll do that as well. Like, I mean, I mean, this yeah. is holy grail material and uh, it's very, very exciting. And obviously I'm brand new to it. I'm still figuring it out. I'm just using some dummy data in there at the moment, but um, yeah. it'd be interesting to see uh, how big you can go with this. You know, I think for us, the holy grail is going to be, I teach year nine maths. I want to see just those kids and I want to see their last three years of reporting data mapped against their behavior and against their, you know, um, reading and numeracy NAPLAN data, bang. Absolutely. You know. yeah. uh, if you that's can do so that, good. yeah, at the, at the tip of your fingertips, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty wild stuff. Yeah, and I've been saying for probably a year now, someone's got to crack this because this is where teaching and learning is getting to. It's all about data-driven data stuff. They would, you know, NAPLAN tests, national curriculums, uh, reporting data. That's, that's all the talk. Everyone wants them to be able to report that students have progressed and so on. But they're wanting it to go from this gut check kind of reality to having some hard numbers. And I've been saying for about a year, like someone needs to just crack the fact that uh, we can, we need to be able to get this data, but not have to be, you know, mathematical wizards to make it happen. And I'm, I'm so excited that Microsoft's got this, uh, this coming out. I just think it's fantastic. Oh, it just blows it's me great. away. And, and I think like, you know, how, how many people in the school could probably put that data together? Maybe, maybe five out of a, or 10 out of a teacher base for 180. And it'd probably take them oh, days maybe. and days. You know, yeah. and then and then you look at what you can do there with just typing a few keys. You know, and I think that that natural language engine that they've got is the key thing here. It's not about the data. We've got all the data. How do we get it out? How do we extract it? And I think that's where mm -hmm. they've done a great job. And, and BI is actually business intelligence. What it stands for, Power BI, mm -hmm. and it's been in business for a long time. You know, mapping sales charts and doing retail analysis and things like that. You know, best selling categories, best selling items, and what we're doing is we're taking that and we're remapping it into an educational context and it works surprisingly well. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, but um, it works surprisingly <laughs> well taking that same model and, and looking at it, you know, over, over different pools of data and pulling together saying, here's this one student ID. I want to find out all these things and connect the dots. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very good.